Alleluia, Christ is risen. Mighty God, to your hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, and that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, when the Paschal Mystery established a new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, forever and ever. Amen. A 
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the portico of the temple, Peter addressed the people who were astonished by the healing of the lame man. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that is, his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you from your own people a prophet like me. You must listen to whatever he tells you. And it will be that everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be utterly rooted out of the people. And all the prophets, as many as have spoken from Samuel and those after him, also predicted these days. You are the descendants of the prophets and of the covenant that God gave to your ancestors, saying to Abraham, and in your descendants all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you, to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. The word of the Lord. children of God when we love God and obey his commandments 
For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stand, stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. 
And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. is just so much that we don't know about the disciples. Their personalities, those traits and tics that put literary meat on the bones of their characters. For some, we may know a father or maybe a mother. We don't know what kind of children they were, what kind of teenagers they were, were they easy to care for. We don't even know how, how they were even as adults. It's Peter the Rock who I like to think of as the most extra of the Twelve. On being told that he has to have his feet washed by Jesus, Peter, of course, says, don't just wash my feet, wash my head and my hands as well. And it's Peter who preaches with such missionary zeal after the ascension. And when he is sentenced to death also on a cross, he requests to be crucified upside down because he doesn't think himself worthy to die in the same, same manner as his savior. Andrew, according to John's gospel, had been a follower of John the Baptist, but he rightly left John to follow Jesus. He eventually led his brother Peter to also follow Jesus and then quietly slipped into the shadows to let his more effervescent brother shine. Though Matthew, Mark, and Luke say that Peter and Andrew were actually called together by the Sea of Galilee. And there are James and John who, with Peter, are the inner circle of Jesus, and they witness the transfiguration of Jesus. According to tradition, it's John who is Jesus' beloved disciple. We know that Matthew drops his work as a tax collector at Jesus' beckoning to follow me. 
Perhaps he just had the good intuition about things and didn't need a lot of convincing. Not much is said about these men that gives us a very clear picture of who they were and just why they took up ministering with Jesus around the countryside. Well, even less is said about James the Less, Nathaniel, Simon the Zealot, or Jude. But we can gather that as named followers of Jesus, they possessed a certain loyalty and faith to the mess- in the message that Jesus was proclaiming and the message that miracles he was performing. Judas, of course, is known best for his betrayal of Jesus who even though he knew that Jesus's la- Judas's lapse in faith would be his own demise, still ate and drank with him. I recently read about a poem about Judas, Judas that broke my heart because of how it remembers that Jesus told parables about a lost coin, a lost sheep, a lost son, always emphasizing the seeking and finding of just the one. And in this poem, the the poet wonders whether Jesus also sought Judas when he descended into hell. In one of his gorgeous poems of blessing, John O'Donohue writes, endeavor to remain aware of the quiet world that lives behind each face. There is just so much to fill in about the quiet worlds that live behind the faces of Jesus' twelve disciples, to see them not as secondary characters in a story about God meant to push only the narrative forward, but to see them as people. I'm of the mind that their whole lives, while not captured in the pages of our scripture, has something, have something to say about our whole lives and where we can find ourselves in the story of God among us. In them, I think we can find our own stories, even if we have to imagine what their stories were, and to build them from the foundation that were offered in the Gospels, in the Book of Acts. Of course, I haven't mentioned Thomas yet, have I? It's his story, or part of his story, that we hear today, but only a small part of it. The quiet world behind the face of he who was called the twin, I imagine, was likely a dance between a skeptical mind and a believer's heart. You may recognize the rhythm of that dance yourself. It's hard not to in this day and age of a constant, constant stream of information and astounding scientific discoveries and technology that allows for a pocket-sized device to contain whole worlds. The doubt of Thomas is so emphasized in our tradition that it's become shameful to ever have it. It's as if we forget that the person who wanted to put his fingers in Jesus' wounds to believe just that, that he was a person, was also a person. We've made doubt something not not like salt for a bland, bland food. A person, Thomas was a person like many people, like many of us, who long to touch Jesus just to know that he's real. A person like many who came after, throughout the millennia, after Jesus' ascension into heaven, who would not get that experience. Well, just Jesus blesses those people. Jesus blesses us. But he also blesses Thomas and invites Thomas to do exactly what he says he needs in order to believe. A week prior, when Thomas wasn't with the disciples, Jesus blessed the rest of them, after all, in their fear and trembling. They didn't know what was going on and had locked themselves in a house because they were afraid of what might happen to them after seeing Jesus crucified. Sure, the woman had, women had encountered an empty tomb, and Peter and John themselves had inspected it according to John's gospel. But they were still so confused. They were terrified. And of course, in the midst of all of that, Jesus shows up. And he blesses them by showing them his wounds. 
He's not a ghost or disembodied spirit. He hasn't been made whole. He's a flesh and blood human being who has been wounded and resurrected. A human being who knew real fear and trembling himself the night before his violent death. A human being with a quiet world behind his face. No one knows why Thomas wasn't there when Jesus reveals himself for the first time to his disciples. I've heard people speculate that Thomas could have been running late or running errands, gathering enough food for them to hole up in this house for a while. Maybe he was gathering information to bring back to the disciples about friends who could offer a home for the night, a safe place to sleep, or those who were sympathetic to their cause, or just how angry the Romans were at them for marching Jesus into the city as if he were a king. I always wonder if Thomas wasn't so deeply wounded spiritually by the crucifixion that he needed some time to process and to grieve the death of the one he'd call Lord and Savior. Time to make sense of how his world the one he'd been imagining with his friends and seeing come to fullness in Jesus' miracles and message came crashing down when he saw Jesus die upon that cross, mocked by soldiers who played games and gambled at his feet. Either way, wherever he was, when Thomas is back with the disciples, a point that I find pretty admirable, given that he showed back up, they rushed to tell him what had happened. And if you see that skeptic's mind and believer's heart waltzing behind his face, you can understand why Thomas was so incredulous. Thomas can't rely on the account of the other's encounter with the risen Christ. He needs his own. And he tells them so, the bare, honest truth of it. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger, my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. I have found myself saying something in response to the gospel reading for every Eucharist this Easter week. And that is, of course, Jesus shows up. Of course, Jesus shows up right then. And he blesses Thomas by letting him touch his wounds and see for himself. And he blesses us, those who will not see and yet do believe. Given that we hear the story of Thomas in conjunction with Jesus' appearance to the other disciples, I wonder if we are invited to consider something other than Thomas's doubt. I wonder if we might not point at the doubters we encounter in our lives whether our others or ourselves. And I wonder instead if we can endeavor to look for and see the quiet worlds behind each face we encounter on this walk of faith together. I like to think that the original disciples were able to do that, to see each other as beloved by God and Jesus Christ. Didn't they watch Jesus eat with the man who would betray him? Didn't they watch Jesus let Thomas touch his wounds? Their belief in the resurrected Christ allowed them to continue to proclaim the good news after all. The division in our world is astounding right now. And if, it is, if we as resurrection people are to join in with that division and to fail to see each other as real people, with quiet worlds behind each face, as real people beloved by a God who keeps showing up for us and who meets us where we need him, then what are we even doing here? To be Easter people throughout the whole year, but indeed especially this season, let us walk together in faith wherever you are as you try to make sense of Jesus' resurrection. Let us walk together in faith wherever you are, understanding yourself to be in this Easter story, in this Easter season. Let us walk together in faith as we all work out 
what it means to believe, to have faith, and to walk in that same love as Jesus. And let us endeavor to have the faith that allows us to see each other more fully as people and blessing one another in our shared journey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I bid your prayers for David Schrader, Kerry Johnson, Malik Galani, Marlela Enninger, Terence Cumro, John Barry, Janine Fitzsimmons, Mary Swolinski, Nia Nitihida Andrea, Ken McPhillips, Elizabeth McLaughlin, Marilyn, Marilyn Labkin, Lee Gould, Robert Pischke, Florence Jones Clanton, Rachel Somolinski, Sarah Reese Gladman, Suzanne Dines, M.B. Huang, Juanita Malone, David S. Jones, Richard Francis Tracy, Victor Fernandez, Claire Green, Beth Hall, Sue Lenz, and Brenda Martins. We pray also for all those affected by natural disasters in Taiwan and those affected by war and conflict in Palestine and Israel. I bid your prayers for the Thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week, John Solominski and Gary Lewis. And I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of Charles Clifton Eden, priest, Thomas Kelly Rogers, priest, Mary Lillian Grimm, Alice Lord Wheeler, Charlie Morgan Taylor, David Squire Belding, senior, priest, and for all those in whose memory the Easter flowers are given. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins but the favor of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of a heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
pray, beloved, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be sensible to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at your hands through the grace and glory of his name, the Lord our Lord, and that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is It is truly right to glorify your Father and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offered you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we, uh, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing.
acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When a disobedience took us far from you, do not abandon us to the power of death. You, in your mercy, came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us in covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the, whole, the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy, to fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the suffocation of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And we give him thanks to you. He broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, to the cup of wine, and we had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the Samoa for our redemption, recalling Christ's death as the Son among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts he has given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them, showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup become one, spirit, one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Anne, her mother, Saint Mark the Archangel, our patron, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise in union with them and give you glory to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Behold the Lamb of God, who only takes away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to a supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect and every good work to do his will, working in you that which will pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, remain with you always. Amen. The Lord be with you. And I also be with you. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.